Hey guys, I've got a lot of requests for a how-to on how to do uh, stencils and do some camouflaging on your guns. People seem to really like the paint jobs I've done in the last two. So I'm going to give you a real basic overview on how to uh, cut out stencils and how to do a camouflage uh, stencil set or color scheme on your gun. Now I'm not going to go into details of how you prep and paint it and stuff like that. Um, first of all, I'm not qualified to tell you guys how to do that because I'm still learning how to do it. I think mine turned out pretty decently. But that you need to talk to somebody who's a refinisher and who's got specialized equipment, who's skilled with an airbrush or whatever they use, teach you how to do it. What I can tell you is how to make stencils, how to draw them out, what I use, what I don't like to use, and a few basics on coming up with a, with a camouflage color scheme. <clears throat> Now, if you're going to replicate an existing camouflage pattern like Multicam, or Army ACU, Marpat, something like that, um, your best off is really to order like a kit that is already set with those colors, that already has the pattern in it. Um, you can do those colors yourself, and if you pick out those colors, great, you can probably replicate it, but that's going to be the easiest for you. For my videos, I'm going to really cover is you kind of want something unique, something you made, and you may know your area of the country really well and you know what works best. And now before you get too far off in this, just remember, if multicam, ACU are, are military colors that are designed to work in a variety of environments, urban, desert, woods, whatever. They don't work great in them, but they do work. If you want something for your environments, like I live in Georgia and I, if I want a color scheme for the woods in Georgia, or the Georgia mountains, or the the savannah, the coastal regions. I'm going to want something specific to that area, and there are specific colors that will work really well. They'll only work really well in those areas, but they'll work great. If you go into a hunting store, like a Dick's Sporting Goods or Bass Pro Shop in your area, you'll usually see some color uh, hunting clothing that's tailored to that environment, because it works really well. In Georgia, mossy oak, is, I believe, is the most commonly used pattern, and it's a woods pattern with grays and browns, and it works really well for Georgia. But it would suck if it was out in Colorado or Arizona, where it's more of a desert environment. Which makes sense. It's sold for here in Georgia. They have one specific there. So you need to take that into consideration where it works well. Now, let's if you're just going to make something cool, you can use any colors you want. There's nothing wrong with that. It's your gun. And basically, if you do camouflage right, it can be in a variety of different colors that don't work so well to your environment. But if you do it right, the whole idea is to break up the pattern, uh, break up the silhouette, and make it a indistinguishable pattern to give you that extra couple of seconds of concealment. Um, it's not a ghillie suit, let's be realistic here, but it's just to make somebody hesitate and go, hey, is that a guy with a gun? Just a second long enough for you to put a draw a bead on him and shoot him if you have to. Now, when it comes to color schemes, I'm going to try and give you just a basic overview. <clears throat> um, you really need to stick with colors that are similar but different. If you want to use tactical colors and you want to use a dark green, a light, I know, a light brown, and a black, you can do that, but it's not really going to work very well because the colors are in such contrast with each other, you're actually going to stand out. Uh, the old army BDUs look like that and they don't really work all that well outside of German forest because that's where the, the pattern was picked because it was a Cold War style and I thought they were going to fight there. And even there it doesn't work all that well, it's an old pattern. Um, so what you want to do is you want to get colors that are similar but different. Um, on my M4 I just showed you guys, I used Magpul Flat Dark Earth, I used Coyote Brown, and then I used what they call Multi Brown but it's also a color called Federal Brown. These two colors are very are very similar, and this color is still a brown. It's darker and it's different, but it's still a brown color, and it's in the same ballpark. So those all worked really well. Um, if you want to go with green, you know, get you there's a multi light dark and medium green color. You don't want to put something like this. If you put uh, so this black with these light browns. It's going to look kind of funny. I mean, the dark brown is at least a brown color, and you've got black, and it's just, it's not going to work right. So try to stick with colors that are similar to each other. If you want to add a funky color in, you can do that, but try and blend it in. I've seen some guys who do urban camo and throw a red in there. I don't know why you'd want to put red in it. It doesn't blend into anything, uh, unless you've got a city on Mars you're trying to defend. Why would you put red in there? But, you know, if you do it right, you can use almost any color combinations. But I'm really going to figure most of you guys are at least trying to actually work this on this planet. And you want something that works well. So, we'll kind of go into the patterns here. Now, there's two different patterns you're going to make. You're going to make male patterns and female patterns. 
The first thing you want to do, of course, is get your gun all broke down, get your color selected you want to use, take your gun away apart, clean it out, prep it, and get ready for paint. Now, I'm not going to go into how to do that. If you guys want me to do that, I'll be happy to show you, but that's going to be a whole different kind of film. And there's guys out there who are much better. I'm not really good at showing you how to airbrush, showing you how to strip the gun down to the bare metal, because I'm not a metal worker and I'm not a painter, and I'm still learning myself. So I'm not going to tell you guys how to do that because I could be completely wrong and I just happen to work out really well for me. I will tell you it's not hard to do. You just got to get the, the butt out, you know, get your balls out and get started on it and learn. Do a little bit of reading and to be patient. Like anything, take your time and it will turn out much better. If you rush it, it's going to look like shit. It's harder for kids that are younger because they have this instant gratification thing. I can't say I didn't have that when I was younger too, but let's fit. If you got a gun you want to do this on, most of you guys are old enough to have a little bit of patience. This is your baby. It's in a no rush. It's not going anywhere. So take your time. So anyway, back to the thing you want to do first. The first thing you want to do, get your gun all painted your base color. I recommend the lightest color that's the most common, um, and that's going to depend. If you're doing multi-cam, there's a really, really light, kind of like a pinkish beige color. That's That's the lightest, but it's very rarely used in the pattern. So don't add that one first. Find the lightest color that's used the most commonly. You'll have to use a little bit of deduction. If it's your own color, a piece of cake. Pick the one that's the lightest if you're doing your own scheme. Um, try to stick with the minimum amount of colors you need. Some patterns look really cool with lots and lots of colors. Multicam's got a ton of colors and it looks cool. But the more of it you need, the more complicated it's going to get. It might start to stand out more. And for a practical purpose, when you're airbrushing, you've got to clean that airbrush between different colors. Sometimes you can get away with just running like some reducer or some paint thinner through it, and it'll still work. But you don't want those colors to mix if you could avoid it. And that's taking the nozzle out, cleaning it, getting it to go. Even if you got multiple nozzles, that's a lot you have to clean. You've got to clean the paint bucket out or the paint ca you know, the caps for it, and that's a lot of work. So I try not to do more than three or four colors if I can avoid it. I'd recommend, especially if you're starting new, make it easy on yourself. That way if you plug up the nozzle, because this stuff is hell on airbrush nozzles. It gets real gummy real fast, and I had to go and buy a specific tool to clean out the nozzles because I was literally, literally having to throw a nozzle away every time I painted until I got this reducer because I could not get that stuff out of the airbrush because it dried and cured and got real thick and even though I would let it soak for days, I'd clean it as soon as I got done, put it in paint thinner, I even tried aircraft stripper, I could not get that stuff out. I had to put it in this reducer and go in there with a, with a needle uh, that I got from Posh and clean it out and now they work okay but it's a pain in the butt. So unless you're going to spend 20 to 30 bucks every time you paint your gun, per color on nozzles or run this stuff through them every time and this stuff's not cheap but you don't get very much of it to clean them out um, try to stick to a minimalistic amount of colors basically what I'm saying sorry to get off track there anyway you're gonna get your sheet out now we'll go into details about what I like to use later but we'll go into patterns first because I'm already rambling enough what you want to do get your first sheet out and you want to cut out the male stencils This is how I do it. There might be people who do the females first. I like to do the males. So what you're going to do is this section you're going to cut out. And then you're going to end up with these shapes. Like this. Okay? That's your stencil. What this is going to preserve is the original color underneath of the gun. Okay? So the area you paint around it is going to be the new color you're adding to it. So you've got your base coat. So we'll show you how this is going to work. <coughs> Let me draw you a crude little firearm here. Let's do like a hunting rifle or shotgun or something. Okay. You get your silhouette for your uh, Elmer Fudd model shotgun here. Okay. And you've painted it all one color. Now what you want to do is add your second color. Now when you cut out your male stencils, you want a lot. And if you cut them out and you got to reshape them, no big deal. Go ahead and do that. It's not going to hurt anything camera a little closer here but I would recommend in my experience when you get your base coat and you get your second coat to try and cover at least 50 percent of the gun with the stencils you want to preserve about half the old color while adding out half the new color so you start laying out your stencils you lay them out now I would also recommend that you try and get them to overlap the gun depending on how you mount your gun to get painted if you got it hanging if you had to lay it down doesn't matter, but try to get your stencils see to fold over the side, over the top. If they're all, if you do one side and then the other, 
um, paint your gun and rotate it, whatever you've got to do if you can't hang it. But make sure your stencils wrap around. If they're all on one side and then you flip the gun over and you add them all and they don't cross over each other, it's going to look weird. So get you some big stencils and try and cover up about half the gun. The, you know, depending on how bizarre you want the patterns, it doesn't matter, but the more, the more lines and the more curves, let's say if you have some really funky shape like this, you know, that might look cool, but, uh, you know, that's a lot of cutting for you to do. There's no problem. It just depends on how much work you, how much time you got, how much work you want to put into it. So you get your stencils. Okay, and they don't have to all be big ones, you can do little ones, but like I said, the goal is to get about 50% of the gun covered. You want half the, half the base color and half the secondary color. Now you're going to spray the gun, get your little airbrush here, and you're spraying the gun. The area underneath of these is going to stay the original color. Okay, the new area is going to be the new color you just, or the old, the area uncovered is going to be the, the new color you're adding. So you can see why you want 50% because you, you need to cover up a lot of this, but you want the secondary to cover a lot of the gun. So now you've got a gun that's going to be 50% the original color and 50% the new color. Okay, now we're, for this uh, example, we're going to stick with a three color scheme. So great, you got half one color, half another. Some people may only want two colors, that's cool, but most people will go with three. So now what you want to do is to take your male, st is to create, sorry, your female stencils. The third color we're not going to use as much um, as the other two colors in my scheme. Depending on your paint scheme, it might be different. But you're going to get your big, your sheet again, and you're going to cut out a shape. Uh, and the third color I like to use just a little bit, so I do a lot smaller shapes. And... Um, I don't do them as often, but this is up to you. And these, this is what you're going to cut out, is the holes. So you're going to have this big sheet with holes cut into it. Now you're going to go back to your gun when it's dried and when you can apply these stencils, and we'll talk about that later. And you've got your big sheet now. And now you've got pattern here, your pattern here, your pattern here. Now let's say we're doing a really dark color. So now you've got your really dark patterns you've cut out you know and then you've got your real your your secondary color you know and then your base color and now you can see kinda of how this is working your third color you're gonna use the least so you want to use the female stencils that way you can apply them exactly where you want you know I want that spot to be this dark color Versus, you know, the other one would are kind of general. Eh, I want it in this area. This is really like your highlight. If you're doing like the chocolate chip, for you guys remember from Desert Storm, when you're doing the little rocks, that's what you use the female stencils for, and then the, uh, you know, for the black, and then the white around the rocks. But you want to put these big sheets down with your smaller stencils that are that color. And the awesome part was with the two big stencils you use, now you've got this little one overlapping. The, the colors are overlapping each other, and they're starting to kind of blend into each other. And that's what you want. And that's basically it. It's real simple to make a pattern you want. You just got to put a little brain power in it and experiment. You know, take a piece of something you don't really care about that's flat, that's easy to work on, and try it out and make up your own pattern. And this is just if you're using shapes. If you want to do like I did, I cut uh, tiger stripes out, sort of. And I just took the sheet and I just cut kind of a jaggedy, real thin strip like that and then your paint will go through this hole and you'll have these black tiger stripes which would look um, you know like this going across the gun you know if you want to do those over the over the, the other pattern so you want this as black and you want this to be like a really dark brown and these two are like a gray that's cool you can do that try not to have two bizarre patterns together you don't want to have like zigzag zebra lines or like a, a digital camo style and then have like these blotches in it. it it'll look funny I saw a guy who had a combination of um, <clears throat> multicam and digicam and I was like I guess that looks cool but the way multicam is supposed to work the digicam screws it up so it's purely for aesthetic I, I thought it was like okay why would you do that either paint multicam or do digicam the way those camo flodges are designed to work 
They need to be the digital shape in those colors, or they need to be multi-cam colors. So whatever is his gun, if he thinks it's cool, but it's just not it's not gonna work as a camouflage the way it's intended to. So anyway, that's your stencils. That's kind of an overview. That's how I do them. It's probably not perfect, but that's how I work on them. Now the real thing is, what you guys probably asking is, well, okay, now I know how to draw them, but what the hell do I make them out of? First rule. Make sure your gun is dry before you take the second step and start painting. The worst thing you can do is lay down these stencils and then pull them off and you've pulled off your first layer of paint while adding your second one. Because you're going to have to start pretty much all over again unless you're really skilled with laying out new stencils and the paint's going to be uneven. It's going to look like shit. So if you've got to wait a day, two days, you know, if you want to put an oven and bake it on there, do that. But make sure it's dry. If you guys, if you're rattle canning it, or using just testers paint, like a, like a you know, any kind of model paint. Um, it can be as long as twenty. It can be as short as twenty minutes. You know, just you'll have to do the finger test or wait for it to dry. Um, if you're doing this in the summertime, I was putting them outside, and literally as soon as I was spraying the paint, it was cooking on to the gun because it was so hot. Now with winter coming up upon us, it's probably not going to work out. You've got we've got you know this is Georgia. We've got two seasons: cold and rainy, and hot as hell. So I've got to do my painting now as it's the week or two of fall I've got before it gets in the winter and it'll be too cold and I'll have to put everything in an oven. So take that into consideration. Now the easiest, well not the easiest, but the cheapest way is to use painter's tape. If you're going to do this, don't buy cheap painter's tape. Buy the 3M, buy the, um, oh, who else makes good painter's tape? Uh, Scott's, that's it. Buy 3M, buy Scott's, and lay yourself out a sheet I'm gonna do a little bit of this, I'm not gonna to waste too much of my paint, we'll use a small example lay yourself out a sheet you know, kinda of like papyrus that the Egyptians used to use, lay it out in strips make you a section, make sure you lay them down you stick it real well you know, something like that, get yourself a sheet out and then you're gonna to want to cut your pattern. Now this desk is pretty beat up. If you got your parents' furniture, I wouldn't do this. And this is a really nice roll top desk, but it's been through hell, so I don't really care if I scratch it up any. Okay. The next step you're gonna to want to do is okay. Now I've got the sheet laid out. I've got the painter's tape laid out. And this stuff, you, it's if it's good tape, it'll still stay sticky if you've got it stuck to something. Just make sure you don't do it on paper. Try to put something underneath it, like wood or something hard, where you can cut into it, but it won't adhere to it real well. There's a couple of different ways of doing this. If you're doing this for the cheap, lay your pattern out right, get you a nice utility knife, and then cut out your pattern. And the mine's kind of dull, so make sure it's sharp. But you can cut your pattern out. Okay? So, and then you're going to go get your utility knife. And now this isn't like I said, this is not a very sharp knife, and I'm gonna have all kinds of problems. But you can see what I'm doing here is I'm peeling up the area I cut, okay? And that's it. You've got your stencil made. Piece of cake. Now, like I said, my knife is this knife is dull as crap, so make sure you got a really nice sharp utility knife. And it's kind of tearing because you're gonna want dry edge. But this is just an example. Can't help that my uh I think my roommate used my utility knife yesterday on something and it's dull as crap. So, there you go. You may have to clean it up a little bit, you know, but by all means, like I said, take your time. So, there you go. Make sure it's all firm, it's nice together, and there you go, you got your pattern. Now, I obviously stuck this to my desk, so I don't know how well this is going to come off, but I was just using an example. Pieces should stick together. There's probably better ways of doing this, and I don't use this method, but I know this will work. So, you get your pattern off. I'm trying to get it off without it separating here. Yep, that might happen, so you might have to do a little finagling with it. You can see it's coming apart, so not I didn't pick a really good surface, but normally if you do this right, unlike what I'm doing, it should stay together. This is also a small pattern, but there you go. Oop, hold on a second. It's one of the reasons I don't use the Scott's tape, I can help it. Okay, 
I'd rather like to use a backing to it, but there you go. That's your pattern, and that's a f you know a uh, female stencil. So uh, you know whatever you apply that on, that will come out. Using this tape, it's kind of difficult, and you need a good background. You got to be real patient. Um, I use it. I've used it in the past until I found something better. Now, what I like to use now, and which is a lot easier, is vinyl. You can get this online, get it from a printing shop. It's just basically a giant sticker. But, it's much easier to use. You can take it apart, you can stick it, you can use it several times. I think it's up to like six times. And it's fairly inexpensive. So, you get yourself, I got a little piece here because, you know, I got to pay for this. Get your piece of vinyl. And if you want to, you can use your X-Acto knife. But, um, mine's dull and I don't want to. And I found a better tool to use it. I got this little Frixus cutter right here. There's a needle here in the bottom. Take it apart. See the needle that comes through. You push down on this top to apply pressure. There's a depth adjuster on it. This thing cost me like two dollars. I found it at an, uh, an office supply store. So now, you lay it on here and you push down and the blade cuts into the vinyl and you move it. You'll hear it cutting. The only hard part with this is you gotta get real close to it to kinda see, but you can stop and you're like, oh crap, I lost where I start. Oh, I started right there and I ended down there. And then you can just start back up. Really, the number one problem here is I don't have any light right now. But you cut that out. Okay? Get in there. I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but I'll show it to you when I get it all done. Alright, I've cut into it. Now the beauty part of the vinyl is, do I want this to be a male stencil or a female stencil? It's your choice. I can peel this middle section out I just cut, make it a female, or I can pull the backing off and make it a male stencil. So, it's much easier than using the tape. Start there, and I cut a little deep into this one. Normally you just get the, uh, let's see if I can do it right. You just get the sticker. I can actually cut into the backing, but that's cool. It doesn't matter. Let's see if I can just get the sticker here. There you go. And it also is, you can perfectly well use this as a male stencil. And then you peel this off eventually peel it from the backing see I told you it didn't matter and you get your female stencil these two are fitting each other if you want to kinda like do like a say you've got you want to do like a white highlight and you want to lay them over and just get a white between the gaps but you know, you've got a female stencil, you've got a male stencil, you can reuse them, you can modify them. Vinyl is definitely the way to go. It's going to cost you more, but not much. i got to roll this stuff. i got like six feet of it for 15 bucks from the local vinyl store, graphic store. You probably can get it cheaper if you order it in bulk online. doesn't matter what color it is. Just get the thinnest stuff they got so you can cut it real easy. It's a piece of cake. And then you can make stencils and you can repeatedly use this stuff over and over. Just tell the guy what you're doing. He'll have the right kind with just the right amount of stickiness. And you lay it down. You iron out, you know, you can push out all the air bubbles. It seals up real well. Just like that. And like, okay, I painted that. Comes right off. And then you go, oh, you know what would be cool? Doing that pattern the opposite way. Okay. There you go. And it seals up and the paint won't go around it. And you're like, alright, and peel it off, and you can use it again. You can use it five or six, seven times. So that's what I do because that's the easiest, and it's the easiest to cut, and it doesn't cost a whole lot. Um, if, you don't, if you just cannot find it and you're freaking out, you can go to Lower Weaponry. They sell a kit with this, uh, I think it's the exact same cutter, and a big roll of vinyl for like 60 bucks. It's kind of pricey to me, but if you just cannot find it or you're really freaking out, you get it, and I mean, it's like 10 feet of this stuff, so you get quite a bit. It's it's definitely at a not retail price. It's definitely a marked up price. But you can do it. And that, guys, is pretty much it for how to cut your own stencils. You can do any pattern you want now with these two on there. So go nuts. And you can try, like I said, you can use them over and over again. Even if you paint on them, the paint dries. doesn't hurt the stencil, so you paint on it again. So I hope that helped. 
Um, let me know if you guys got any questions. Like I said, I'm not going to go into stripping the metal and cleaning it all off and airbrushing because I'm not good enough. I'm still a noob at doing that stuff. But I've done a lot of these stencil patterns so far, and I think I'm getting better at it. And I just wanted to give you an overview of how to do your own stencils. So guys, let me know if there's anything you got any questions, anything you want me to help you with. Um, I'd be more than happy if you're Georgia, if you live in Georgia and you're local and you want a little help on a weekend. If you want me to give you, if you want me to give you a call, or uh, and uh, or maybe walk you through it, I don't mind helping you out either if you're local. And I'll be more than happy to answer questions online. Uh, if you got anything specific on color and patterns, I'm not an expert by any means, but I'll try and do what I can, or at least point you in the right direction. So I hope that helped. I hope that gave you a how-to on how to do it, and uh, I will see you guys later.